Hello everyone and welcome back to another Idiot's Guide here today with your local idiot, Ash. Going to show you how to play a Thaumaturge. The Thaumaturge is your standard black mage type class. It's your offensive caster, fire, ice, lightning. You want to do lots of damage with lots of magic, then this is the way you're going to want to go. Now remember... You find anything in an idiot's guide that helps you out or that you enjoy, head pats and ear rubs are always welcome. But before we can really get into the Thaumaturge's basic battle mechanics and what you're going to do in every fight, we really need to go over the Thaumaturge's gauge. Because the Thaumaturge is going to get this gauge right at the beginning with their class, which is not something that happens to most other classes. That's because Everything about how you fight revolves around this gauge. So if you look at the skills, you'll see that they have additional effects. Grants Astral Fire, Grants Umbral Ice. Well, that's what the gauge is used for. It's used for you to see your stacks of Astral Fire and Umbral Ice. Now, where most other casters in the game will have their MP bar, sure, but as long as you like pop lucid dreaming when you start to get a little low, you can usually keep your MP bar up high with most casters throughout an entire fight. The entirety of the Thaumaturge's kit is designed around sticking yourself into a fire phase, which will burn through your MP very fast, like all the way down to zero in probably just a handful of casts. And then swapping over into an ice phase, which makes your attacks less powerful, but makes your MP regeneration extremely high. So when you're in a fire phase, your attacks, specifically your fire attacks, are going to become more powerful, but they're also going to cost more MP, which is going to burn through all your MP very quickly. You also do not have natural MP regeneration when you're in a fire phase, so you can't rely on that. Not that it would help that much with how fast you're going through your MP anyway. And when you're in an ice phase, your attacks deal less damage, but your MP regeneration is so high that by the time it takes you to cast just one or two spells, you're already going to be all the way back up to 10,000. And so the whole kit revolves around that, around swapping to a fire phase, ice phase, fire phase, ice phase, fire phase, ice phase. And that's just how it goes. One thing we need to note before going into me explaining how all of these things work is you might see a lot of like additional effect, additional effect, additional effect on my tool tips. And you may not find a lot of those same effects listed on your tool tips. It's not something you have to worry about too much. I'll go through the traits to show you why I'm getting a lot more additional effects and things like that. But the basic premise is that the Thaumaturge is a class where a lot of the skills that you get really sort of level up in a way or become more potent or have new effects added to them as you level the class. Let me show this off by going to traits, right? Aspect Mastery 1, that allows you to get one stack of Astral Fire and Umbral Ice. You're going to get that right at the beginning. Maim and Mend is a basic potency buff. Aspect Mastery 2 is what allows me to get a second stack of Fire and Ice, which you won't have at the beginning, not till you're level 20. Thunder Cloud has to do with the Thunder Dot attacks that you get, and I'll go over that in a minute. And as I said, I only cover these classes up to level 30, so I also have Aspect Mastery 3 and Fire Starter, and these are adding some extra additional effects that you're not going to get unless you get up to these levels. So that's where some of the extra additional effects that I have that you won't have up to level 30 are coming from. Now we can quickly go over Thundercloud. As I said, the Thunder spells are your dots, your damage over time effects. You have your basic Thunder, which is a single target, and your Thunder 2, which is an AoE. All right? Your basic thunder does a bit more damage because it lasts a little longer. Your AoE does a decent amount of damage, doesn't last as long, but they also have the additional effect of proccing thundercloud. 
and your single target has a higher chance of it happening. Now, it happens every tick. For anyone who doesn't understand what a tick is, every time a dot that you have placed on an enemy does damage to that enemy, that's a tick. And the benefit for Thundercloud, which I am going to go over because it's only level 28, so you will get it before you reach 30, is that when Thundercloud procs, the next time you use a Thunder attack, either one, you're going to take the entire amount of damage that that dot would do over its entire time on an enemy, and you're going to hit them with that burst of all that damage up front in the initial hit. And then it's still going to put the normal dot on top of the enemy, basically doubling your damage that your thunder is going to do to them over time. And the first half of that damage is getting hit on them right at the beginning. This is one of the reasons why... Well, for every class that has a dot, you generally just want to keep your dot up on the enemy always, as long as you think the enemy is going to last long enough for that dot to be useful. Which in the case of like this, 21 seconds, you don't have to think the enemy is going to last a full another 21 seconds or more for this dot to be useful. If you think the enemy is going to last 10 or 15 more seconds, it still might be worth it to throw this dot up just to keep burning their health down faster. Other than just having the dot up, whenever it ticks over and you proc Thundercloud, it can be worth it to just throw out another Thunder. Even if they still have another 10-15 seconds before the dot wears off, throwing out another Thunder right then can be useful. Normally I would say, oh hold on to it until you've had the chance to let the dot sort of go down and then throw out the Thunder with a Thundercloud on it except for the fact that you can only have a single thundercloud proc on your character at one time. So it's going to refresh the dot anyway when you hit the enemy, put it up to its maximum amount of time again. So even if you got 10 or 15 seconds left, getting that thundercloud proc that you've got on you off of you by throwing out an initial hard hitting thunder attack on the enemy and refreshing the dot that you already had on them can be worth it because it then opens you up to accept another thundercloud proc which it may only be 10 percent on the single target and three percent on the aoe but still if you've already got thundercloud it's now zero percent that you're going to get another one so it can be worth it if you get a thundercloud to just toss out another thunder single target or aoe doesn't matter just throw out another thunder and like get rid of that thundercloud to open yourself up to get another one and to just do a little bit of burst damage to the enemy and refresh whatever dot you may have on them so now we'll get into the basic battle for the thaumaturge and as i said starting off you want to keep your dot on the enemy you got your single target and you've got your AoE, and it's got a decent range, right? It's five yams, so it's able to hit both of these pretty easily. Uh, five yams is not much more than that distance. You might be able to hit someone out to about there, but beyond that, you're probably not gonna. But see, I've got a thundercloud. Because it's not just the benefit of dealing burst damage up front. When you've got a thundercloud proc, that means you can throw out another Thunder for 0 MP cost and 0 cast time. It's an instant cast, no MP cost, burst damage Thunder attack. So throwing one out whenever you have a Thundercloud can definitely be worth it. So there's another Thundercloud. There you go. And just keeping that dot up on the enemies. There's another Thundercloud. I'm getting pretty decent luck with the procs. You're probably not going to proc Thundercloud this often in most content. And you may miss the fact that you get a Thundercloud. Just forget about it or whatever. That's fine. But if you can remember to throw out your Thunderclouds, then do it. It's 0 MP, 0 cast time, double damage, burst damage up front. You know what I mean? It's, it's not worth it to hold on to a Thundercloud. Just use them. Now, as I said, we're moving between fire and ice phases in our normal battle system. And one thing you need to understand is 
the Thaumaturge is a pretty stationary class, right? Like, all of your abilities, all except one, well, all your weapon skills or spells, except for one, have a hard cast, have a, like, full, like, two and a half, 2.9, 2.43, and I think I have some spell speed buffs going on my materia. But they're like two and a half to three seconds long hard casts where you have to stand still and cast them out. So it tends to be a pretty stationary class. You can see I've now gone through all of my MP. I can't cast any more. could throw some other stuff out, but not another fire spell. I could cast a blizzard except for one problem. If I cast an ice spell, I'm not actually going to get a stack of umbral ice. For this for these basic spells, Fire 1 and Blizzard 1, when you interchange between them, you don't get a stack of the other one. You lose it, the one that you have first, right? Grants Umble Ice or removes Astral Fire. So you have to double cast. With these ones, that can be really annoying. When you're in your fire phase, you'll have to cast an ice once in order to lose your fire and then again to get into your ice phase to start regenerating MP. And that's not ideal. So early on, what you're going to be doing when you're fighting is making use of transpose. This is the ability that the Thaumaturge gets. They get it very early on. All right? You get it by level 4. What this does is it takes away every single stack you have of whatever phase you're currently in and gives you one stack of the opposite phase. Now later on, it's not ideal because later on you do get abilities which will actually change you between fire and ice phase automatically without having to cast it twice. But early on when you're dealing with just basic fire and blizzard, transpose is how you're going to want to do it. Like you're in a fire phase and you're going through your MP and you're going through your MP very fast and I'm not going to actually put it all the way down but you're like oh I need to regenerate MP well then you transpose which automatically puts you into a one stack of the ice phase and starts your MP regenerating back and then you get your MP back up to maximum transpose back into fire and then start throwing out your fire spells for damage and again, make sure you have your dots up while you're doing this, too. Keep your dots up as much as you can. Then transpose into an ice phase. All right? That's how your basic flow for combat's going to go very early on. You're going to be going through your fire attacks and then transposing and then using your ice phase to build up your MP again and once that gets back up to max transposing back and then using fire attacks to deal damage again and that's pretty much how you're going to be doing it now I also have fire 2 at level 18 and blizzard 2 at level 12 which you'll get these are basically just your AOE versions of your basic fire and blizzard these are what you're going to be casting in dungeons with whole packs of enemies and stuff like that i have these automatically giving me umbral ice 3 and astral fire 3 they are automatically giving me three full stacks yours will not be doing that when you first get them when you first pick these skills up they'll probably just give you a single stack of fire or ice one extra thing which is nice about them is that these ones on mine when I change between them I don't need to transpose because you'll see it automatically changes my stacks I don't need to cast twice this will automatically set me into the other phase now I can't remember for sure whether they do that from as soon as you pick these skills up or whether you need to unlock certain traits before they'll automatically but the thing you need to be looking for on your tooltip where I have additional effect. Grants Umbral Ice 3 and removes Astral Fire. But if I look at this one, Grants Umbral Ice or removes Astral Fire. That's the important thing. Is it and or is it or? 
if it says or removes the other, then you're going to want to be using your transpose to switch phases so you don't have to waste an extra cast removing your current phase before getting into the other one. If it says and removes the other, then you don't need transpose to switch between those ones. You can just switch between those phases automatically just by using the skills without wasting time on transpose. That is going to be the basic flow of your combat. Back and forth, fire phase, ice phase, fire phase, ice phase, transposing if you need to, or just using the skills if they'll automatically transpose you between them, and keeping your dots up and throwing them out again anytime you get a thundercloud proc. Now you may see there's one extra combat skill I have here. This is Scathe. There's whole jokes and memes and nonsense in the community about Scathe being useless and don't even put it on your bar. Scathe's not useless. Now Scathe doesn't do a ton of damage, has an additional effect, ooh, 20% chance that it will actually double its potency when you damage an enemy. That's cool. But the same way that white mages farming for free cures is useless because the time you're wasting trying to farm those free cures is better spent just using stronger cures, trying to farm for a double potency scathe is pointless. Don't waste your time with it. They might as well just remove that additional effect. I mean, it is beneficial when it happens, but don't bother trying to use Scathe all the time just hoping you'll get the double potencies. It's not worth it. But the one benefit Scathe does have, look at that tooltip. Instant cast. Instant cast. Guess what you can do while you're using Scathe? You can avoid mechanics and run around the battlefield. You can catch them from, an end, from the end and hit them hard without having to do a hard cast as you're coming up towards a group of enemies. And what I tend to use Scathe for a lot is we're in a dungeon and the tank pulled this pack and then they're just going to keep running and they're going to pull two or three more packs before they sit down and focus down the enemies. Well, most other classes have a way that they can just chase the enemies down and just hit AoE attacks or even just single target attacks and just damage the enemies while they're moving. Or they can throw a dot up on the enemy. and They'll burn down their health a bit while they're moving. And you might be able to do that, right? Thunder 2 is not the quickest cast, but you might be able to get one off and then just use that. But if I'm trying to run and keep up with my tank and the packs of enemies he's pulling and deal damage at the same time, I'm using Scathe. That's what I use Scathe for, to chase enemies down and damage them. Now it's a single target attack, not super powerful, so you're only going to hit one enemy, but it can still be good damage, right? While you're, I'm just doing an ice phase to get my MP back up. While you're chasing down an enemy, it's just more damage you're putting out to burn down their health while you can. And that really does cover pretty much all of the moment-to-moment -moment combat stuff Thaumaturge is going to get. Everything else we have here is some situational stuff that we have kind of similar things on other classes and then things that we literally have on like every single caster class. So our situational start with sleep. This is an AoE sleep ability that lasts for 30 seconds in dungeons and boss fights not as useful unless you know there's a reason for you to use a sleep mechanic going into it and you've already worked out the idea that you're going to use a sleep mechanic at a stif specific point and for a specific reason with the rest of your party outside of dungeons and solo content things like that if you've got a bunch of enemies coming at you at once, hit them with sleep, and while a bunch of the other ones are asleep, you can focus the enemies down just one or two of them at a time. It can be very useful in that situation. And then, the Thaumaturge gets something very useful. So the Thaumaturge does not have any healing ability. You don't have any real way to heal yourself. You can use potions, but you don't have any abilities for healing yourself. What a Thaumaturge does get is Mono Ward. Now, you're not going to get this till level 30, right up to the end of what we're talking about level-wise. 
uh, as I've said before, you most likely will get past level 30 before actually unlocking your job. I only really cover up to level 30 because you're going to be close to it by then. This is a much later ability for this class. But if you have it, it's good. This is a barrier that you can put on yourself that is equal to 30% of your total HP. You're effectively giving yourself 30% more effective health for 20 seconds. So it's good if you're getting hit, if you're popping it and then nothing's happening to you. See, there's the shield right there. If you're popping it, nothing's happening to you. It's kind of a waste. But when you're getting hit, popping up a shield that gives you 30% extra effective health can be very useful. And that can keep your health up so the healers don't have to spend as much time healing you. Beyond that, we have the usuals, stuff that every caster gets. Lucid Dreaming, which I personally have found very little use for on a Thaumaturge. The problem with Lucid Dreaming on a Thaumaturge is when you're in a fire phase, your MP regeneration is turned off. This is not a we reduce it by this amount or... We don't let you get your natural regeneration, but if you put something else on, that'll go through it. No, this is like an on-off toggle switch. When you're in a fire phase, you are not regenerating MP. Lucid Dreaming isn't going to help with that. And when you're in an ice phase, you're regenerating MP so fast that while Lucid Dreaming could technically help, it's not going to help by much. And then you get swift cast. Now, a lot of other casters will use swift cast on their resurrection abilities. Obviously, a thaumaturge doesn't have the ability to res. Good places to use swift cast on a caster that can't res will basically be with whatever your longest casts are. In this case, it's your AOEs are actually your longest casts. So using it on one of your fire AOE attacks uh in the middle of one of your fire phases or using it to quickly switch over with a blizzard 2 another possibility is your sleep if you're just completely surrounded by enemies and you just don't have two and a half seconds to hard cast this or the enemies are just going to interrupt you if you try and hard cast this and you're basically dead if you don't put them to sleep you can do like a swift cast and then just put all the enemies to sleep instantly. That can be a good use of it. Other than that, like I said, your AoEs are the best place just because of how long they take to cast. But you could use swift cast pretty much wherever you want on a Thaumaturge. Like I said, you don't have a resurrection ability, so saving it to res someone else in an instant isn't going to help you there. So just sort of look at your kit, see what parts you really think would work well with a swift cast. And lastly, Addle. We've gone over these plenty, right? Addle, Faint, those types of abilities. They reduce the amount of damage an enemy's going to do. In the case of Addle, 5% physical and 10% magic for 10 seconds. Not a long period of time. Can be useful to Addle enemies in the middle of fights, just basic fights, basic attacks. If the enemy is really strong, it can help. But where Addle and Faint shine is when you're facing a very dangerous enemy bosses mini bosses uh, extremely powerful targets things like that and you know there is an attack coming not a not a basic attack not an auto attack but like their cast bar comes up and it shows that they're about to unleash a big dangerous attack that's going to hit one person or the group or the whole arena whatever it is very hard addling them before that attack finishes can be a very good way to just reduce the amount of damage they're going to deal with that attack and that really covers everything you're going to need to know for the thaumaturge at least up to level 30. beyond that you'll be getting your advanced job the black mage and they'll have a whole bunch of new mechanics to keep track of Honestly, after you've played this class up to level 30, you'll probably be able to figure out a lot of the mechanics of the advanced job yourself. Just read your tooltips, pay attention to what your abilities do, and if worse comes to worse, find a striking dummy. Put a little time into practicing your job. That's one of the best ways you can figure out what you need to do. As much as I 
<laughs> don't love to do it i will ask for all the likes and comments subscribe all of that stuff if you're interested in more of the idiots guides or just keeping up with what i put out on my youtube channel in general and until we move into the next one i will see you guys later Bye bye